Hey Gemini, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings, so we take what works, we leave what doesn't, as with everything in life. If I don't catch your wavelength or storyline here, um, check your other major placements. Don't catch your energy signature here, which we were just talking about with uh, Taurus. Um, check your other major placements, see if I can't catch a, anything there that makes sense to you or feels useful to you or feels good to you to hear. All right, we're starting with the Oracle cards, the uh, Moonology and Work Your Light. And then we'll move on to the Muse Tarot for a more traditional tarot spread. All right, um, although the Muse Tarot is not entirely traditional. Ooh, oh, Aries just got this one. I personally just got that one. Um, Okay, you are on the move. You know what you want to do. It's just time for you to do it. This is not an uncommon theme so far. We have dance with life. Do something to change your energy. So changing our energy, we can do that with breath work, different breath exercises. Uh, there's some really cool apps um, that help acquaint you to breath work. Uh, so changing your energy through that, through movement, moving your body, physically changing your energy. We can also emotionally change our energy. Some of the easiest ways to do that are music, uh, watching something, engaging with some sort of story that takes us out of our energy and brings us into someone else's energy. Music is an incredible way to change your energy. It's change the energy in a room. It can turn my, my car into a stressful situation, into basically a, a spa where I'm just relaxing as traffic doesn't move at all and I'm just gonna chill here with my with my Reiki music and enjoy that so changing the energy changing something up this is also about changing the way you approach something changing uh, maybe an attitude or maybe even the actions I'm seeing a lot of action here so you may be changing your energy from passive to active from imagining to creating it from um, from the rest of these all really point to changing to the, to a more active energy from a more sedentary dreaming energy both of which are very important and required um in movement in life so we also have emotions are running high super moon something's really obvious it's so obvious um it's so clear this is this isn't the sun card because it comes in the moonology but this is basically the sun card this is like as big and as bright as that moon can be it's clear there's some clarity here there's some obviousness there's there's a, how you feel is real clear it's not hidden there's not a secret uh feeling here or a secret something it's just emotion and it could be a you know a high key emotional thing where you do want to change the energy maybe take it down a notch not that high key emotional energy is bad but just sometimes um when we base actions and activities off of it uh, we can head off in, a, in an unhelpful direction. So, um, so we this emotions running high, um, and you might want to flow with that though. Maybe that maybe you've been waiting for this burst of inspiration. Maybe you've been waiting for this burst of energy and emotional power to to push you towards something. So allowing allowing a flow of emotions too, right? Our feelings can change. Um, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm not sure if I'll. You know, I don't, I'm not sure, here's a silly example, but I'm not sure I want to buy that dress because even though I really love it, well, I love it every day. Well, you don't have to love the dress every day. You can love the dress once a month and it's still a really good purchase or it's still, you know, decent uh, usage, right? So no, obviously you're not going to love that every day, but when you do roll with it, roll with that flow, roll with that changing energy, roll with those changing feelings and emotions, uh, let them flow through you. Um, and then we have confidence is your key to success, new moon in Leo. So if we're starting off on a new venture, if we're starting off on a different, different foot or different trip, make sure that we are, um, you know, feeling confident that we can pull this off. You know, if we're going to start a conversation, we need to feel confident that it can go well. We need to 
you know, that we feeling confident is very different than knowing and having certainty, but feeling confident in yourself to deal with where, whatever direction this conversation may go in, or whatever direction this activity may go in is very different than being certain about what uh, direction this activity is going to go in, but being confident that you can handle it and that maybe it'll bring up some things that'll, that, that, that might be unusual, but you'll, you'll be able to handle it. So having confidence, having confidence that you can handle whatever comes your way. Um, so it's the key to success though, right? And we all feel that energy, right? We have this dance with life, do something to change your energy. We all can feel that energy between someone coming in and like, I don't know if I can do this. And it affects us. We, we, if we're not, if we're not on it, if we're not careful, we're not aware that this person may have, um, you know, low self-esteem, but, but can over deliver, but under promise, under promises, um, but can over deliver. If we, if we don't already know that, it can change our the way we feel about that person. So coming in with something with some sort of confidence allows other people to have confidence in you because we're all just people too, trying to make the good choices. So going into, you know, and wanting to, to invest in something that's more certain than something else, right? So we all want to make an investment in something that's a little more certain. And if you're exuding confidence, then that feels to me like a more certain investment then of my time and energy and my employment, employerism, um, and whatever, right? So coming in with that confidence, yes, I can do this job. Yes, I can uh, handle this conversation. And, 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 the, and yes, I can handle these intense emotions. Thank you very much. Um, and then we have, you're very close to achieving your goal, gibbous moon. So look, there's just a sliver left. There's just a sliver left, a little bit left to go here. Um, don't push, no need to rush. We're just gonna kind of cruise right into our spot here. We're not gonna, we don't need to punch the gas. We don't need to push something and make something happen. Sometimes confidence is mis misinterpreted as that push to make something happen. I'm gonna make my way in this world. No, confidence is more like, the world can unfold as it wants and I will be able to handle whatever comes my way. I'm fine. I can do this. I can handle this and I can make moves when the door opens and I can withhold when the door is closed, right? So this is, you're very close to achieving this goal. Your goal, do not push anything. Don't shove anything. Don't, don't, uh, you don't need to, you can still make moves because we do have a move called for here, but it's a very gentle move. You can still make moves and you can still, work towards your goal, but you don't need to push. It's closer than you think. Um, and these obstacles, these trees, these obstacles are sort of receding and sort of sort of allowing this thing to happen. So maybe some adjustments are needed. You might be feeling a little tense, a little like as this last sliver unfolds, um, what should I be doing? What's my role here? Um, and so uh, so you may be feeling a little tense as this 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 thing happens and reminded of a baby coming into the world and that that last little bit there's a lot of watching a lot of waiting a lot of tenseness you don't need to push um which is very funny because your body pushes for you if you allow it if you're able to allow it and you haven't been medicated which is you know not to dis medication it's just much more natural to push and and it's very hard to resist that natural movement of the body if you're not numb So for, for people that have had very natural births, the idea that anyone would have to yell at you to push seems very strange. <laughs> You'd have to yell at me not to, and then, and then it would take everything not to. So there's a little bit of that natural process happening, but there's a lot of this is, this is a moment watching and waiting. You can handle whatever's coming your way. You don't need to, no one needs to yell at you to push. It's very obvious. Uh, what you need to do here. And then we have be bold and make the first move. And this is why I think we're getting you very close to achieving your goal. We have something that feels like it's starting, but it's almost like the end is starting. The end, the, the completion of something is starting. Um, so, uh, so be bold and make the first move. So this is not necessarily be brash. This is not necessarily be pushy. This is not necessarily a lot of ways that this could be interpreted. Um, because we have this... Um, like adjustments might be needed. You might need to shift gears here, but you don't need to push. So we're being bold and making the first move, but not in a pushy way, right? It's, there's a very, there's a sense of, of just you having a natural sense of confidence in your ability to deal with anything that comes your way. Um, it, 
allows for this to be a very natural movement, right? We don't need to, to jump before we're ready. We don't need to, to push anything before it's ready. It's all coming in. Um, it's very gently. Uh, so you maybe have been in a, in a, a real strong energy of, of needing to push and needing to make something happen and needing to, to, uh, carve out your space in this world or needing to, needing to really make something happen. And maybe that's been the energy that's been driving this train for a while. But as we come into the station, we're, sh we, we got some downshifts here. That's funny because Taurus got some upshifts, but I'm seeing you got some downshifts. Let's just coast into the station. We don't, the pushing time is over. It's time to change that energy from you know, full steam ahead to cruising into the end, right? We've got sort of segments in life, beginning, middle, and end. And this is sort of the beginning of an end segment where we can just cruise through it. But be bold and make the first move might be be bold and make the first move, take the foot off the gas, right? Um, so there's that possible interpretation for that. So it may take some courage for you to want to shift gears into something. It may take some, some courage for you to do that. So that's where our boldness needs to come from. And making the first move, initiating something, changing the energy, right? We're asking you to change the energy and sort of dance with life and you change the energy. So you make that movement to change the energy, but no pushing. Just this is a very natural, natural process here. Um, but you're, you're changing the energy, um, of a situation, not that it's been bad, but you're changing that energy and you're doing it very gently. Um, the, cause I think that it's, it's on purpose of these two cards, you've got to do something or you've got to make the shift, uh, in the situation, but, um, but you do it real gently. All right, we've already shuffled these cards, so now we're going to break them. And if you were here, dear Gemini, you would break them. And then your energy would be on these cards. And it would be that we're approximating that with this, this situation here. Past, present, inner landscape, what's at issue? Your environment, to-do list, possible outcome. I love this fool card showing up all, all over the place here um, this week. She's just traipsing through everybody's readings, just skipping along here, uh, showing up everywhere. So in your recent past, we have the Fool card. You took a leap of faith. It was scary. There was fear uh, because it's not a leap of faith unless there's fear. There's no such thing as faith unless there's doubt first. There's no such thing as courage unless there's fear first, right? Um, so there, there was some risk. There was a lot of thought that went into it. It wasn't like a pure impulse. Uh, there was some thought that went into it. Uh, risks were noted, duly noted. Thank you for the information. I'm going to do this anyway. So a leap was taken, um, a first step, a beginning. I mean, this is this is the zero card. This is the level zero of, um, and I'm always reminded of uh, Kung Fu Panda with that. The, so there's now a level zero. So this is the level zero. This is this is the first initial thing. This is the zero. The full card is the beginning of our, our of our hero's journey. Uh, the uh, risks have been duly noted, but the first step outside of the norm, outside of of what has become our norm and, and our normal paths through life, that first step out of that has begun. The adventure began. Um, and so then, uh, and there is no adventure without misadventure. I mean, what? Misadventure is adventure, in my opinion. If things don't go wrong, I'm not happy. Uh, unexpected things don't happen, or or things don't go wrong. And if things if things don't if things go according to plan, I don't really feel like I'm having an adventure. That's how I see that. So uh, in your current situation, you have the Devil card, though. Ooh, so something you leapt into something, and now you're a little bit stuck with it. You took a leap of faith and now you're feeling like, oh, what did I do? What did I do? I don't want to be here anymore. This was appealing. This was exciting. This was interesting. This was sexy. This was fun. And I can't get out of it now. So this is like uh, the devil card is anything that prevents us from following our own intuition um, and our own. And sometimes it's good, right? We got to make commitments. Um but this is a commitment. It's really staring in your face. Or this could be an opportunity to make a commitment right now. You've taken a leap of faith and it's led you to a moment 
where commitment is being asked from you. You know about commitment. You know that you can't just, once you make a commitment, once you sign that lease, sign that mortgage, sign that marriage certificate, it's really hard to back out of it. Um, this can also be addiction issues. So yeah, we, um, you know, uh, a, a drink to unwind after work every so often is fine, right? Uh, but then at some point it became less about a choice you make and more about uh, habitual behavior that seems to have you bound and is going to be a little bit tricky to get out of, like a contract. So um, so it's something, the devil is something that's a little tricky to get out of that does not allow freedom and a lot of, not allow free movement, at least in some area of your life. So there's something uh, that, and it's not necessarily that you want out of it, it's just that you're noticing um, that you may be a little bit stuck, that you may be a little bit trapped here, that uh, this is not going to be as easy to get out of as you thought going into it. And then when you went into it, you didn't want to get out of it. Why would you want to get out of, uh, you know, you head into marriage and you, you don't, the last thing on your mind or should be on your wedding day is how you get out of this. Um, so, um, so that's a little bit like, oh gosh, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this situation? Uh, that I'm in and I've made you've made some sort of commitment or some sort of some sort of habit has been formed or addiction or commitment and it's just not going to be super easy to change you're just you're really noticing uh, this is not going to be easy to get out of um, and then uh, in your um, oh that's why you're going to need confidence that you can get, that you can change the, either the energy in the situation or you can get out of the situation. That's why you need this confidence is your key to success because you're going to have to commit to getting out of the situation, right? The, the antidote to a commitment is apparently a commitment to get out of it and do whatever it takes. I mean, if, if that's what you want, it may not be what you want. You may not be longing to get out of it. You may just be really noticing that there is some sort of, um, where, where did my freedom go? Where did my freedom to move and do whatever I wanted to? Where did my freedom to stop drinking whenever I felt like it go? Where did my freedom to, um, you know, pick up and move whenever I feel like it go? So there's just like a, oh yeah, that's right. I made that commitment. All right. So I'm not necessarily seeing that you're ready to get out of it, although it looks like you may have to make some moves and make that commitment to get out of it with some level of confidence. But, um, but there is like a question, <laughs> there's like a noticing that, that you may be in a little deep in a situation. Uh, your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape, three of inspiration. Um, so you're, so this could be either your hope or your fear, seeing where something's going, uh, seeing uh, where this all ends up. This is a card of faith, but this is also a card of a visionary. Um, a visionary with some, with, with so much faith that maybe they don't even acknowledge their faith. Like we're talking about this fool's journey where, um, you know, we take the risk, uh, we have the faith, um, and the faith is based on the fact that there is a possibility of doubt, right? It, otherwise it's called certainty. Otherwise it's called facts. Um, so we have faith because there is the possibility for doubt. This three of inspiration, you're looking for more faith. That where this goes, like, did I saw that? Can I see that? Can I see where this is all going? And you might be worried about where this is all going and seeing sort of the uh, pattern unfolding and being very worried about it. Or you could be having quite a, or you could be longing for the larger vision, the overall picture of where this is all going. Um, so this three of inspiration here is uh, hoping and possibly fearing a vision into the future of a sight in uh, some foresight some some uh faith in the future if it's if it's hope you're hoping for some faith that everything turns out everything's all right everything's gonna go okay but it could be a fear of uh, that you really do see where this is going and it you're already in too deep to to get out very easily um so you could be worried about like more unfolding and and where this is all going so three of inspiration in your hopes and fears at its heart is, is being able to see where something's going, um, uh, being able to understand how this pattern unfolds, um, and either being worried about that or either being, uh, or either craving more of it. So, um, what's an issue here is ace of emotions. Ooh. No emotional beginning. There's no, um, there's a sense of feeling drained. 
there's a sense of having possibly even like lost. There's not a sense of a new beginning. There's not a sense of an exuberant new beginning. There may have been, we have this fool card in the past. There may have been this exuberance here and this life giving new beginning. But at this point, we're feeling dried up, barren, drained. That new beginning, whew, depleted. And now, oh, I see. Now, now that's why we're starting to see the, the commitment and the strings and the the difficulty of getting that situ out of the situation because that first rush of the the first steps is gone it's that honeymoon period is over and now you see the bondage now you see you know what was behind the sweet words what was behind the um you know cute looking apartment you know you're starting to see well my neighbors argue all of the time now and i don't like it here anymore but i signed a lease but I didn't see that at the beginning. I, I knew there was a possibility I'd have some crappy neighbors, but did not understand quite. And this, it's not going to get better with them. So how do I get out of this? So you're feeling the, the love is gone here. The honeymoon period is over. The, you know, fog of ecstasy and something new has cleared. And now we see the, the desert and the jagged cliffs that it was hiding or you know, you're just starting to see the reality of the situation. At first, there was a lot of excitement, and now there's a sense of um, the thrill is gone, and uh, and the reality is sort of setting in here. So you're either hoping for, like, some new sort of burst of faith in the situation, or you're you're worried that it's going to unfold in, a, in an unpleasant way. So, um, oh, this reading just gets better and better. All right, Gemini, uh, in your environment, you have five of voices or some sort of situation where uh, difficult choices, hard choices, almost impossible choices, a choice between who you are and who you want to be, a choice between um, you, your well-being and somebody else's well-being. You're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place. This is a no-win situation. Uh, none of, yeah, it's pretty much a no-win situation. Anything you decide is kind of going to suck. So there's a situation um, where there aren't really good options. There's not an easy, it's exactly this. There's not an easy way to get out of this. There's no easy way to get out of something that you've gotten into. Um, it's like you like did some work for the mob or they did some work for you and now they want, now what are you going to do? You're going to... Um, Kill or be killed. Uh, it's probably not that dire, right? These tarot cards can get a little drama heavy because um, we're dealing with archetypes. So we're dealing with big stories, big arcs. But for each of us, it's going to be, you know, a scale of one to ten. And some cards may be the one and some cards may be the ten or the whole reading may be one to, you know, on the same scale level. So this is I love this card, though. I used to hate this card. I dreaded it. But I, one thing I love about it is that it acknowledges that not all of life can result in a win-win solution for all parties involved. Not all of life can result... We can't always compromise our way out of a situation. Tough choices have to be made and they're hard. And the only way to make them is to go deep within, touching, touching in with your soul. It might be a really unusual. This card also talks to me about a situation in which you might have to decide something that you don't usually decide. Like if you are usually a bit of a doormat, this might be asking you, you might have to stand up for yourself in a way that might cause someone else some harm. If you're usually like a bull in a china shop and just doing whatever you want, you may be in a situation where you could lose something very valuable to you unless you make what's a more difficult choice for you to place someone else's well-being above yours for a moment. So, and it's not going to feel good. And either way is going to be a sacrifice. So there's a there's a choice here, a decision here. Um, the olive branch is theoretical. There might be an olive branch, but there's going to be some bite to it. Uh, so there's some sort of situation in your life uh, where there's not an easy choice. There's not an easy option. Um, and you're going to face consequences either way. And it's a little bit of like having to pick the least bad thing. Um, so in your to-do list, we have this aid of inspiration. Um, communication and movement. Oh yeah. 
Emotions, this would be emotions running high. This would be be bold making the first move. This would be you do something to change the energy here. This is a, definitely an energy shift. Aid of inspiration is communication, movement. Yeah, this would be right at the beginning we were talking about, I felt like a shift between this contemplative situation and, and more movement. This is movement. This is talking moving, communication, move, get, getting something moving. We're going from zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. It's, it can be very exciting and very thrilling, but this is mixed with this. This is a call to action. You've got to, you've got to move here. Um, you can't, fish or cut bait sounds really weird. Like fishing so sedentary. And cutting bait seems so active. But maybe that's a little bit of what's going on here. Right, where fishing also could be perceived as anyway. It's it's you got you gotta um you gotta move. You gotta make a move here. Uh be bold, make the first move. You've got to open up a conversation. Um, you've got to like make some physical movement. Um, again, this doesn't have to be brash, rash, ill-considered, uh, um, you know, impulsive. There's nothing here that says this movement has to be impulsive. In fact, we know there's been a lot of thought and a lot of going within, but you've got to move now. This is aid of inspiration. This is the energy. You're looking for your opening. You're looking for your opening to move, to make this movement happen. And then what we have here. In your possible outcome on everybody else, another favorite card, you guys, uh, Seven of Voices. Um, there may be secrets revealed here. Maybe you're revealing secrets. A silence is broken. Uh, something that was hidden is revealed. Something that seemed um, to be going a certain way is no longer is, is um, revealed. This can also, seven of voices can also be like, you need to camouflage your actions and your behavior, especially if the consequences are going to be outsized. You need to talk about something, but then this is not talking. That's a possible outcome. If you don't talk about it, then we just keep going here with this lies, secrets, not talking about something. Um, lies, secrets, and controlling the situation through not talking. So either someone's going to be doing that, or after communicating, you realize that whatever party or whatever situation you're communicating with isn't going to budge. Um, you may need to be now silent and make your moves quietly. And, um, and you said your piece and now just do your deeds. And, uh, this, this can be, seven of voices can be a call to win at all costs. Um, and it can also be just a heads up. Someone could be still keeping something from you. There could be still secrets and lies in this situation, even if you've revealed uh, what you need to reveal. So seven of voices, um, it could be, you know, depending on where you, what you need to do here, it could be a difficult choice to, to keep. Uh, once you communicate, once you see how that goes, you may be like, okay, yeah, I will not be communicating anymore. I'll just be making my moves. Thank you. Um, and, uh, or depending on how that goes or the, so there's something, a possible outcome. If you don't communicate, then the secrets and lies continue. That could be, it could be a warning. Like unless you, you bring the energy of open communication and open movement and openness, unless you bring that, um, then the, then secrets and lies will continue. Or you can bring that, see what happens and then move, move quietly. Uh, after that, depending on how it's received. So it could be a warning. Uh, it could also be a, um, uh, you know, communicate, then do this. Uh, and when, once you've done your part, once you've brought your energy and what you want out of the situation to it, once you do that, then reconsider and, and uh, re you might want to reconsider after you do that, but you can't make assumptions about how it's going to be received and responded to. All right, Gemini, that was a long, but I think we made it through. Um, thank you so much for your likes, subscribes, and comments, and I hope this was helpful for you, and I'll see you in a fortnight.